Taiwan. The Cooked is um, actually a, it's a road movie um, through Taiwan. Taiwan is um, the small island um, near China, so it's China's neighbor and has an amazing food culture. And we are looking at the food culture also through the eyes of like foreigners, of course, and we try to um, also give a lot of information about the ethnic diversity of Taiwan, you know, because food is more than just something to eat. It's also, it tells you a lot about the traditions of the people. And in Taiwan, we have a lot of um, uh, indigenous people, and they have a special way of preparing their foods, and uh, we visit them um, in the east coast of Taiwan. And then we go from, of course, we start in the capital of Taiwan, Taipei, and go to really amazing restaurants and then we take a tour through the east coast to the south and we go to a Buddhist um, monastery in the south of Taiwan where they have spe spectacular foods and then we also go to another minority and they're called the Hakka it's, um, uh, it's, it's kind of a um, it's people who um, were nomadic uh, originally they came from the north of China and came down to Taiwan and they also spread all over the world. There's a lot of Hakka people living in the States and Canada, all over the place. And um, in Taiwan, they came in the uh, 17th century already and in several waves and they do prepare um, like nomadic foods. You know, they have a lot of, um, they, have, they make food so they can preserve it. Right, so it's really fantastic, very diverse foods in Taiwan. Were there any challenges or difficulties filming Taiwan? Um, well, I've been to Taiwan before. I made three other films there, one um, narrative feature and two more documentaries. So I'm kind of, um, I know my way around and I work with uh, a group of people there who also um, do uh, television shows and run the um, public television station there. So for me it's it's relatively easy to shoot there, but the only problem of course is um, I know a little bit of Mandarin Chinese, but not too much. So it's a very difficult language to learn. So I always need like translation when I shoot there. Yeah. You know? I mean you've got a wonderful mm. back catalogue. Well, you know, in a way, as an independent filmmaker, a lot of things happen by chance, you know, so I was never dreaming about shooting in Taiwan, for example, because I shot in, um, in America, all over Europe, in Mexico, and in Brazil, and then I was invited to Taiwan to a film festival, and then one, two, three, four projects developed out of meeting people and getting really infatuated with that specific culture. And what does it mean to you to have one of your films screened here at the Cambridge Film Festival? Oh, for me, it's like coming home. It's like a family to me. I've been here many times, and I just love and adore the festival because it's organized by film lovers, you know, by total film buffs and. I've known Tony Jones, the director, for many years, and we meet like every year at the Berlin Film Festival. And uh, for some years, I was also helping to get like the German film series together here. And you've done documentary and feature films. Do you yes. have a preference, or are there kind well, of pros and cons to both? I like to do both, really, because with uh, documentaries. Um, the shooting experience for me is much more interesting and it's more flexible because I have a small team and um, you know we can really go and change our schedule um, but then the editing process is more difficult with uh, documentaries so then when I'm getting bored by uh, the post-production process with documentaries I like to do fiction again because then the, uh, the editing process is much more linear and easier. You and know. finally, can you tell us if you've got any upcoming projects? Um, I will again work in Brazil now. Um, I will go to uh, Brazil for another research trip. And um, hopefully next year, we, early next year, we're going to shoot there.